You can hear me, can't you? Good. Uh, well, uh, to mark the occasion of the launching of this vessel, the 500th of my fleet, I have asked Her Grace very kindly to perform the ceremony. Your Grace. Oh, thank you. It gives me great pleasure to name this vessel. Pardon? To name this vessel the Lady's Lou. <laughs> no, 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 Your Grace. The Lady Sue. <laughs> I named this vessel the Lady Sue. Rather to unpack the sandwiches, my love. I think we're in for a shower of loaves and fishes. <laughs> right, Your Grace. Now we can proceed. Oh, thank you. I named this vessel the Lady Sue. <laughs> Morning, sir. Oh, hello, Honky Tonks. How are you? Are you good look, Alan? Yes, thanks. Feel confident to handle it? What, with this rig out on? You must be joking. How can I go wrong? <laughs> one final word of advice, yeah. sir. If you find yourself in trouble, get tied up to one of the boys. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm engaged to one in Chelsea. <laughs> Bye. Oh, life on the ocean. <laughs> I heard what you said to that man. If there are any boys going spare, I'll have one. I didn't mean that kind of a boy, madam. Miss? Oh, well, I can't have one of them. Are you married? Oh. Actually, the point is... Uh, well, I'm looking for a nice yeah, young man but, like you. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I assure you, Your Grace, that everything will be perfectly all right this time. Yeah. Every good sir. I've got a bizarre to work this afternoon. I named this vessel the Lady Sue. One thing, Ernie. I'm getting sick and tired of Dad. He just seems to take it for granted that this baby's going to be a boy. Yeah, well, I do the same thing myself sometimes, don't I, darling? Yes. You wouldn't be disappointed if I had a girl instead, would you? Of course I wouldn't, love. You know why he's so dead set on a boy, don't you? It's because he's never had a son himself. Yeah, but you'd never get him to admit it. According to him, he's got kids all over the UK. <laughs> Half of Europe and what we used to call the old British Empire. <laughs> oh, mate. He makes me ashamed sometimes. 
Well, I've overheard him in here boasting to you men about the various women he's been with. It's all fibs, you know. It's not a word of truth in any of it. Ah, uh, we're well aware of that, love. Don't you worry. I know. To get anywhere near the score he claims, he'd have to be Casanova, Errol Flynn and Charlie Dunnage. <laughs> Who's Charlie Dunnage? Oh, he's a bloke I knew in the RAF. Not a flaming liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a right old romancer, your dad, isn't he, Lil? Yeah. The yarns he spun us in here. He's the only bloke I ever met who's a colonel in the submarine service flying heavy bombers. <laughs> <laughs> He's told so many fibs. I don't think he can tell fact from fiction now. Yeah, silly old Nana. Still, you'll never change him after all these years, girl. No, sometimes I wish I could. It would take a miracle, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's nice you and me being out together having a drink, isn't it? <laughs> Just uh, like a couple of the lads. <laughs> yes, Dad. Well, what are you going to have, my love? A dirty great pint of bitter. <laughs> Dad, you know I only drink orange juice. Yes. <laughs> oh, evening, George. Hey, Jim, here's your pint, mate. Oh, thank you. Oh, and uh, Lil will have an orange juice. Only she was at a posh champagne party in Chelsea with some lord last night, so she's going to take it <laughs> easy. <laughs> You're at it again, ain't you? You rotten old liar. Lil hasn't had a drink in six months and you know it. Oh, blimey, what do you want to turn up and spoil everything for? Oh, and a pint on the slate for Spike. <laughs> Who? Spike, my grandson. But he's not even born yet. <laughs> If you buy him a pint now, I'll be a bit flat by the time he's ready to drink it. <laughs> but Spike's a lamp wicker. By the time he's five, he'll be knocking him back so fast, you won't be able to pull him up. <laughs> Dad, how come you came to choose a stupid name like Spike for him? Well, it's like Spike Grover, the famous cruiserweight, isn't he? He lived down Spicer's Road, didn't he? I never heard of him. Yeah. Another one of his stupid lies. <laughs> Evening. Pint a bit of please, landlord. Right. <laughs> Ernie? Hmm? Does that fella remind you of anybody? Huh? No. Nobody I can put a name to. <laughs> <laughs> Evening. Nice little pub you've got here, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? This your uh, first visit? Oh, yes, yes, it is. Oh, why don't you come over and join us? What do you oh. want to ask a perfect stranger to sit here for? <laughs> That'd be a bit hospitable. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> help feeling we've met before somewhere. No, I don't think so. I don't come from hereabouts. I come from... <laughs> Hot as bar. Oh, yeah. Hot as bar? Hot as bar? You know Hot as bar, don't you, Dad? <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you do. You told us you served there in the last war, in the Pioneer Corps. Yes, well, it was only for a short while. It was only a couple of nights. From what I've heard, it was more like 18 months. Yes, well, time passes very quickly in Potter's Bar. Yeah, it <laughs> would for a bloke like you, wouldn't it? <laughs> Young Lock in Var, the great lover. I remember you telling us chaps down here how you used to chase the birds up there. Shh, shh. My dad was a soldier. Was he? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Dan, what's the matter with you? What, um... What brings you to these parts, Mr. Um, um... Mullins? Mullins. Sid Mullins. Oh, Sid Mullins. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for a place called uh, Spicer's Row. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you know it, do you? No, I don't. No. It's nowhere around here. Have you gone out of your mind, Dad? You were born there, so was I. We all live there. Well, that's a coincidence, isn't it, eh? You, um... You got relatives in Spicer's Row, have you? I, uh... 
I'm not sure. <laughs> I never knew my dad, you see. Ah. Oh. But my mum used to let the name slip now and again. Spicer's Row. You don't know... You don't know anybody called Jim lives in Spicer's Row, do you? Yes, there's lots of them. There's Jim Ford, Jim James, Jim Weston. Don't forget your own one, Jim. Yes. Jim Lapwick. Yes, all right. <laughs> is your name Jim, sir? Yes, it is. Andy lives in Spicer's Row. Andy served in Potter's Bar during the war as a soldier. <laughs> so did hundreds of others. Hundreds of them. <laughs> What year might that be? Uh, well, it, it was... Uh, 1942. 1942. Uh, 1975. I'm 33. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here, what are you staring at? <laughs> Father! Hey, get out! Get out! Get him off! What are you complaining about? You've always wanted a son, now you've got one! Dad, how could you? I never did. You must have done. Oh, my daddy! Don't get him off! Get, get, get out! Get him! You, yeah. you, you mustn't speak to your little boy like that, Daddy. Here, yeah. what's happened to your tash? <laughs> I think we've come unstuck, Ernie. <laughs> A terrible thing to do to a poor old man, you rotten lot. <laughs> well, you told so many tall stories, Dad. We thought we'd teach you a lesson. You must admit he was pretty good, Dad. He got your silly daft ways off to a tee, didn't he? <laughs> Come on, Sid, I'll buy you a scot. Cheers, mate. I suppose I deserve it, really. I, I do uh, I do tend to get carried away, don't I? You <laughs> certainly do. And you've been making my life a misery about wanting a boy. Yeah. That's why we thought we'd give you one. Well, I'll tell you something. If it's a girl, I'll be just as proud. Oh, Dad. That's nice. After all, I mean, there's no reason why a girl can't box. <laughs> <laughs> she might be very good at soccer. I mean, if we cut her hair and call her Jackie, nobody need ever know. <laughs> Ernie? Yeah? Drink up. We're going home. Oh, now what have I said? Oh, for goodness sake, what have I said? Sick, suffering from nervous exhaustion. I suppose you'd like to come in for a cup of coffee, would you? No, thanks. I had one just before and I left town. Blimey, I suppose I've got to pay you cash. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Lucky old Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Milkman. Thank you, Missy. How are you? Nice to see you. Off to play around? Good heavens, no. I had enough of that last night. <laughs> see you. Oh, good morning, young man. Yeah. I represent the Gold and Silversmiths Association of Piccadilly. Yeah. 
Have you any articles to sell? I mean, such as china, glass ornaments? No. Gold watches, silver brick a brac No. False teeth? <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Oh, there's a good lad. Here you are, son. Have a goldfish. <laughs> I'm a goldfish. I live uh, just across the road there. I want to buy a few things, but I can't carry them very well, I'm afraid. That's all right, sir. I'll give you a Oh, that's very kind of you. What do you want, sir? Uh, well, I've got a couple of pints of milk. Oh, yes, sir. Let's see, and, uh, and some butter. Got some butter. Yes, butter, sir. okay. There we are. There we are. Uh, yes. I've all some eggs. Some eggs, yes, sir. Eggs. Here we are. And a pound of sugar. Sugar, yes, sir. Uh, on a loaf, a loaf of bread. There we are. Is that the lot, sir? Anything else you want? Well, there is one other thing. What's that, How much you got in here? <laughs> Oh, good morning, madam. Miss. Oh, miss. I need to pursue some inquiries on behalf of the local authorities. Yes. A gas fitter called in response to your report of a leak four days ago, and he's not been seen or heard of since. He's locked up in my back bedroom. <laughs> and perhaps you know something of an electricity meter reader who visited these premises the day before yesterday. He's locked in the attic. Oh, Do you want to know about the man from the water board? Didn't even know one was missing. He's locked himself in the cellar and he won't come up. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for some more details, miss. Oh, all right, then. Come on in. <laughs> oh, hey! Please milk one. <laughs> Hello, dear. You're home early. Get inside. I want a word with you. Now, come on. <laughs> now, uh, don't forget what I told you. Bags of scotch. Get well onto the old booze and try and organize some local wife swapping. Do you the power of good? Just as you say, Vicar. Yes. Oh, and if I don't see you with the dogs on Saturday, remember, traps six and one are reversed. <laughs> ah, good morning, postman. Uh, excuse me, Reverend. Yes, my son. I couldn't help but over here. Isn't that rather strange advice to give one of your flock? Well, you see, I am not the rector. No, he's at home mucking about with my wife. <laughs> so I'm mucking about with his parish. <laughs> Why did you get stuck into the registered mail? You never know your luck. Bye-bye, <laughs> myself. Last time, Rupert, the answer is no. You don't get another penny of the Uckfield money. Oh, but Uncle Hugh... You'll have to wait until I kick the bucket and you inherit the title and the estates and then you can do what you like with it. But, Uncle, this place costs a fortune to keep up. Yes, well, if that young layabout bothered to totter along to the House of Lords and poke his nose through the door, he'd pick up a few quid that way. But dash it all, Uncle. I mean, it's not as if I'm asking for a lot. Well, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, all we want is a measly half million. Oh, and how do you propose that I raise the money? Well, couldn't you sell a village or something? Oh, all the confounded... Quite right, Uncle. Now, you mind your own business, Jill. It's nothing to do with you. Now, that's enough. I'm sick of the pair of you. You don't get another farthing out of me. I thank you for your dinner, but not for your conversation. And now I'm off home. Good night. Oh, and good night to you, too. <laughs> Farewell, your place. Oh. What, what happened? The, 
beastly lighter went off and shot him. <laughs> oh, my God, it's not a lighter at all. It's a real pistol. I picked up the wrong one. Oh, thank heavens for that. It was only a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor little uncle. There, put that oh, on yeah, your yeah, head. Yeah. Oh. Oh. He's a goner. Oh, Lord. Well, I'd better go and phone somebody. Oh, sit down, you silly idiot. Who the hell do you think's going to believe I shot him by accident? I've just become the 11th Duke of Uckfield and I've inherited about five million quid. Have you really, darling? Oh, congratulations! Oh, no. <laughs> marvellous? What do you mean, marvellous? What's marvellous about it? When the police see this little lot, I won't be here to enjoy it. They'll put me inside for years. Oh, well, never mind, dear. I'll look after the money till you get out. <laughs> but there won't be any money, my pet, so don't get any wrong ideas. The moment I'm convicted, I get disinherited as well. Oh. What the hell are we going to do? Well, I don't know. Perhaps there's a department at Harrods that could deal with him. <laughs> oh, you stupid girl. Just a moment. Just a moment. You're always reading those silly detective novels, aren't you? Now, now how, how do they cope in a case of this kind? Oh, well, in those books, there's always one person who gets the blame. Who's that? The butler. <laughs> the, well done, old thing. I'll ring for Grovel. <laughs> You rang, my lord? Yes, Grovel. Her ladyship and I would very much like to have a word with you. Oh, I'm honoured, my lord. Uh, pour some brandy, would you? There's a good fellow. Oh, certainly, <laughs> Fill three glasses, Grovel. <laughs> With respect, my lord, don't you think his grace has had enough? <laughs> uh, no, 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 the third glass is not for the Duke. The third glass is for yourself. Oh, my lord. In fact, it is about my uncle that we wish to talk to you, Grovel. Isn't that so, darling? Mm, if you say so. Have a look at him, Grovel. How does he strike you? Well, if I may make so bold, sir, I should say he's ever so slightly dead. <laughs> yes, our thoughts entirely. And uh, here's where the snag comes in. You see, I shot him. Oh, then congratulations are coming on two counts. Firstly, on your accession to the title, Your Grace. Oh, thank you. And secondly, on the accuracy of your shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Woe betide the grouse on the glorious twelfth. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> do, do sit down, my dear fellow. Oh, I <clears> hardly <throat> like to in front of you. Yes. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Let's just, what for once, dispense with formality, shall we? Oh. I mean, after all, Jill and myself, we've always regarded you as one of the family, so to speak. <laughs> Isn't that so, darling? Well, yes. Sort of. Well, well, if you insist. Uh, no, 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 no. Here, in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we are. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> well, isn't this cosy? Very nice, yes. <laughs> how, uh, how long have you been with us, Grobo? I've been with the family now, sir, for the past 40 years. And no complaints? No, except one incident concerning your sainted father when I was boot boy. Oh, uh, um, this is something that we can discuss in front of the Duchess, oh, isn't it? it's perfectly all right, sir. You see, he had the habit of dressing me up in your mother's clothes. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, in her fox fur, as you see, and hunting me round the hundred-acre paddock. Oh. Ah, I see. Well, it's how perfectly rotten for you. Yes, thank God he never caught me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was only a harmless piece of fun, mm. really. That attitude does you credit, Grovel. Oh, madam. I quite agree with you, my darling. And seeing that you have a proper respect for your betters, my dear fellow, well, it encourages me to raise the topic I wish to discuss. Oh, I'm all yours, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see, Grovel, we're in a bit of a mess. Yes, I can see that, sir. Uh, might I suggest some warm water and vinegar to remove the stains from the carpet, sir? Really, Grovel? Oh, yes, it's Lift very efficacious, carpet. Carpet. I'm not talking about that. What the hell with the carpet? The point is that as the 11th Duke of Uckfield, I can hardly go to the police myself and confess to shooting the 10th Duke. I shall undoubtedly lose the title. And about five million pounds. Yeah, uh, quite. 
And as the Duchess reliably informs me, in cases of this kind, it is usually the butler who gets the blame. <laughs> the butler, Your Grace? Uh, yes. So, if you wouldn't mind just popping off to the police and confessing, well, it would uh, relieve us all of a great deal of embarrassment. You wish me to confess to the killing of your uncle, Your Grace? That's it. You've got it. Jolly good. Uh, mind you, uh, you'll probably have to spend a few years in a house of correction, but, well, after living in the servants' quarters, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. <laughs> yes. Well, I shall be happy to shoulder your burden, sir. Excellent. Capital. On one consideration. You'd like the rest of the day off? No, no, no. no, no <laughs> There's one small problem which I would appreciate your help in solving concerning my sister Amelia. Yes? Forty years ago, she visited the Globe Cinema in Acton to see the film Top Hat with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And during the interval, she felt a sharp jab in her left leg and awoke to find herself in a house of ill repute in Buenos Aires. I say, how absolutely fascinating! Yes, she's most anxious to return home. Oh, I quite understand. Um, how old is she now? Fifty-eight. <laughs> and longing for the sight of daylight. Yes, and I suppose you want the, want the fare. Well, I suppose that seems reasonable enough, don't you think so, darling? Oh, no. uh, a couple of hundred be enough for you, Bravo? I was thinking more in the region of two hundred thousand pounds. Two hundred thousand pounds? I wouldn't dream of it. I wouldn't but, go... No, no, no. Five million, darling. Uh, refusing such a reasonable request. <clears throat> lot of money just to get your sister home from South America. Well, you see, she's most anxious to return the pretty way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we can leave all the details to you, Grovel. Oh, I think it might be as well if the Duchess and I pushed off to Paris for a couple of days yes. until all the unpleasantness has cleared over. Very good, sir. Come along, my darling. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle. We are sent you a postcard. <laughs> Do you want me, Father? Come and sit down, my son. I've been thinking about your future. Yes? How would you like to go and live in a large house on the moors? <laughs> yes. And do nothing for 15 years and get 200 pounds for doing it? <laughs> You're casting for a new children's film, Tales of a Little Yellow Basket. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I've brought my daughter, Raquel, along to see the producer about a part, please. Uh, yes, well, he's busy at the moment, but if you'd like to sit down... Oh. <laughs> By the way... <laughs> yes? If I were you, I'd go in with her. Put your act straight, for goodness sake. Come on. Morning, Joan. Hello. <laughs> well, go on, then. Go on. Oh, so. Oh, my God. What's he as? Well, I should have thought it was obvious. What's the name of the film? Tales of a Little Yellow Basket. Well, he's it. <laughs> Not that sort of yellow basket. Oh, you stupid thing. Give us your glasses. Put them in there. I told you not to put them on. Now, then, what's the film about, then? It's a fairy story. Oh, if I'd have known that, I'd have brought his brother. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Curtis in? Yeah, but he's tied up at the moment. Well, would you tell him that Vanessa Flamenco is here from the Flamenco Dramatic School of Art yes. with one of her pupils? Yes, on, all right. Down. 
Oh, hello, Myrtle. Hello, dear. Oh, you dear. <laughs> well, how are things at the Academy? Oh, shocking. I've got nothing to work on. Well, I've, all I've got left is... Oh, to get off her, will you? <laughs> Come here. Come and sit down, Clint. I wasn't doing nothing. Oh, I wasn't doing nothing. Did you hear that? I wasn't doing yeah, nothing. I heard that, All yeah. the money I've spent on his elocution lessons, and he can't even speak proper. Oh, he's a whopper, isn't he? Yes, no wonder I did all those bananas they stuffed up him in that planet of the apes. <laughs> Your Raquel, any work? No, things have been a bit quiet lately. Oh. Still, I must say, give her her due. She keeps herself in pocket, Mummy. Oh, really? She goes up Chelsea Barracks, does a few odd jobs for the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the Navy get to hear about it, dear, she'll be able to make a bob or two on the Ark Royal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put that fag out. Put it out. You won't get the job like that. Fairies don't smoke. <laughs> hasn't put in an appearance with her little Laura. Oh, poor little love. Do you know, all her teeth are false. And she's only nine. <laughs> I know. It's because her mother makes her do all those toffee commercials. Yes. Oh, it's dreadful the way the business has oh, changed, yes. isn't it, dear? Yes. It's lost all its glamour. Oh, it has. Do you know, I often think back to the times before I was a madam, when I was a film starlet. Rank? Diabolical I was, love. <laughs> In fact, they sacked me after my first film. What happened? Well, I got the words messed up. It was shocking. I went, I had this scene, you see, where I had to take this letter in and say to my two sisters, which one of you missed the post last night? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, where are the kids for the fairy parts? Come on, go on, go on, go on, miss. God, not you two again. You've been coming here for donkey's years. Sorry I can't use you. Uh, Joan, I'll have a nice cup of tea with Another wasted morning. Well, I've had enough of it. I'm finished with you. I'm going out to buy myself a pair of long trousers and start living like a man. In that case, I'll come along and help you. <laughs> oh, dear, we've lost them. There goes your last pupil. Now what are we going to do? Well, I don't know what you're going to do, dear, but I'm going along to the Chelsea Barracks to do a few odd jobs for the soldiers. Come on. <laughs> I'm home. Hello, love. Just made a cup of tea. Oh, good. I could do with one of them. Oh, got the pattern book, then. Yeah. Personally, I don't know what all the rush is about. The little nipper ain't due for months, is he? Yeah. Maybe, but I want to get you started. I know what a slow worker you are. Yeah, but I can be a fast worker sometimes, darling, can't I? <laughs> don't be rude. Come on, let's have a look at the designs. I want to get that spare room nicely decorated as a nursery in plenty of time. Oh, look at this one, with a little noddy all over it. I can't stand that little perish, you know. <laughs> Carp parping all over the place. <laughs> well, how about this one with three little pigs on it? Oh, yeah. Ha! I bet they don't sell many rolls of them in Golders Green. <laughs> right. Three little pigs, Golders Green. You're not being much help, really. <laughs> I see uh, Mrs. Turner's telly blew up again. <laughs> Who's Mrs. Turner? You know, her sister used to make tea for the home guard, and her brother told me he was tripe dresser down at Deptford. <laughs> and their uncle George. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on. Just before we get all their life history, what's this got to do with a TV blowing up? <laughs> You'll soon find out when you fancy a pair of kippers for your tea. <laughs> what are you talking about? So far to the fish shop. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to know better by now. Oh, no. Do you want a cup of tea, Dad? No, thanks. I'll have a glass. Uh, no, thanks, Dad. Um, not just now, no. <laughs> not for me, I'm gonna have a cup of tea. You're not getting any. <laughs> She's just a small token of appreciation for services rendered. What services rendered? Well, uh, I was down the spread eagle, you know, having a game of darts, when uh, in comes Les Fawcett. What do you have to ask him for? We'll never get this paper chosen now. Les Fawcett? 
Isn't he a porter up at the hospital? That's right. You remember when Alia was in hospital and you turned up to visit her without a bunch of flowers? No, I do not. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> he was the one who sold you a bunch he'd nicked from the men's ward. <laughs> that's nice. You're a rotten old stirrer, that's what you are, mate. Yes, well, anyway, he was telling me about a young doctor who's looking for lodgings, you see, and I, I was uh, able to put him in the way of getting some. That was kind of you, Dad. Yes, well, I don't think you could do too much for the medical profession. No, that's <laughs> right. Yes. I'm going to need their service myself before very long. Yes, that thought had occurred to me too, my love. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, then? Ernie's going to turn the spare room into a little nursery and we're trying to choose some nice paper for it. What spare room? The one at the top of the stairs. <laughs> On the right. <laughs> Facing the loo. <laughs> that spare room. Oh, you mean the one I've let to a doctor? That's right. <laughs> what? what? You've had the flaming sauce to let my baby's nursery to some blooming doctor? What the hell do you think you're playing at, mate? Now, hang on a minute and I'll tell you. Now, you know very well this has always been my dearest wish to have my grandson born on these premises. 41 Spicers Road, the traditional birthplace of the Lampwicks. We've been into all this before, Dad. My baby will be born in hospital. And so will mine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's the marvellous about being born in this dump? Well, if you hang on a minute, I'll tell you. I have a very good reason for that child to be born in this house. I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want our little getting upset. Oh, I bet he's got a beauty coming up now. <laughs> Come on, let's have it. Things happened at that hospital. What <laughs> things? Well, the baby you come out with is not necessarily the one you went in with. <laughs> Do you mean they get them mixed up? That's right. Don't be ridiculous, Dad. That's impossible. They put little armbands on them with the names on. Yeah, all right, then. Supposing the night nurse gets a sack and goes round swapping the armbands. <laughs> <laughs> all the little perishes look alike. You can't tell them apart. Boulder Dash. Unadulterated Boulder Dash. Listen, I am going into hospital. How you'll be able to stand there watching that child of yours kicking and screaming on that bed, I don't know. And why would you be doing that? Homesickness. <laughs> Homesickness. How can he be homesick when he's never been home? Because <laughs> babies are like salmon. <laughs> They're always trying to get back to where they were conceived. <laughs> well, this little chap's got a nice long swim in front of him. <laughs> what are you talking about? As far as I remember, me and Lil was on the Costa Brava. <laughs> Ernie. Now, listen to me, Dad. We don't want to hear any more about it. You can tell that doctor he'll have to find somewhere else to live. That room's needed for my baby's nursery. <laughs> oh, don't take on so, Lil, don't take on. Now, listen, my love, think a minute. You see, with your own resident doctor, you'll have no need to worry. I mean, if the baby should start coming in the middle of the night, all you've got to do is knock on the wall. <laughs> What happens if the baby starts coming when he's gone to work? <laughs> well, she'll have to exercise a little self-control, that's all. <laughs> I reckon have, having Dr Muckerjee here be a good thing for all of us. Muckerjee? <laughs> yes, Muckerjee. Muckerjee? Yes. Muckerjee, 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 yes, Muckerjee. That sounds a funny kind of name, doesn't it? Sounds a bit foreign to me. Well, it's Indian, I expect. <laughs> that does it. Lil, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced, but that does it. I'm not having an Indian doctor in this house. Why not? Well, how do we know he's any good? Well, he's probably delivered hundreds of babies in Bombay. <laughs> There's millions of them in India. I oh, know, but they're brown babies, ain't they? Ours is going to be a white one. <laughs> well, what's the difference? What's the difference? Yes. Well, it's like Ovis and Mother's Pride, isn't it? <laughs> well, you may have something, Dad. If this doctor would promise to move out as soon as the baby was born, I, I wouldn't mind having him here. Give us a feeling of security, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, my love. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou. I'm, I'm going to put my foot down. But, Ernie... I'm going to decorate that little nipper's room, and I can't do it with some Indian quack living there. That's my final word. Uh, Dr. 
to Mackerjee's here, darling. Come in, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Dr. Mackerjee? Yes, that is correct. Oh, welcome to our humble abode. Thank you. Do have a seat. <laughs> Hope you'll enjoy our, your little stay with us. Um, do you like to choose some wallpaper for your bedroom? <laughs> oh! oh. Before you look at the wallpaper, uh, Doctor, I'd just like to show you to your room. Thank you. Excuse me. There's a very fine view from the window of the garden. That's not the spare room. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Next, here on UK TV Drama Daytime, we have a comedy that's also a national institution. It's Terry and June. <laughs> 